Well, President Trump's budget proposal calls for totally defunding the National Endowment for the Arts. That provides several hundred million dollars in arts funding to programs across the country. That is Hollywood and Broadway angry. They're warning that art will disappear across this nation without robust taxpayer support. Tim Daly is a seasoned and longtime actor. He voiced, among many other things, Superman in a bunch of shows, had a lead role in the CBS show Madam Secretary. Tomorrow, he's visiting Capitol Hill to advocate for what he calls the right to bear arts. Tim Daly joins us now. Tim, good to see you. Thank you, Tucker. Good to see you, too. So, I just look, I'm not against art. I just don't know why average people in a country in which the middle class is shrinking, getting poorer every year, ought to be subsidizing rich people in order to pay for art. Well, that's exactly not what's happening. Okay. I, I totally agree with you. Um, the National Endowment for the Arts does not subsidize rich people. It has nothing to do with them. The National Endowment for the Arts has grants that go to every congressional district in this country. Hollywood's going to be fine. Broadway's going to be fine. Kennedy Center is going to be fine. It's the little towns in Idaho and Nebraska, mm -hmm. which otherwise would have no arts at all, and their children would not be exposed to or participate in the arts that need this program. And I would also say that, you know, it was characterized in your, in your introduction that there were several hundred million, no, 155 million, and also that it was a robust uh, support of the arts, which it's not. It's minuscule. It's 0.004% of the federal budget. Well, then it's budget. not necessary, then, is it? Well, I mean, it I don't is. understand why in a country I'll where a small why. number of people have larger accumulations of wealth than anyone's ever accumulated in human history, why Jeff Bezos can't pay for this single-handedly. I'll tell you why. Why? Because... Um, in, in a society, in a culture, uh, where the arts are sort of the emissary of the unique Americanness uh -huh. of what, what, what we are, you need the federal government to at, at least make this gesture towards um, what we stand for. And, you know, the thing is that these small grants that go out, first of all, they generate a huge amount of, of return to the federal treasury. Every right. dollar spent generate something like seven dollars back to the federal treasury so uh, an argument could be made that the the national down for the arts budget should be you know a hundred times bigger right. if it generates that kind of income the other thing is Wait, that but I'm, I'm a little bit other confused. Thing is, we're yeah. both agreeing here that arts are really important I guess or you're making that case I fly fish and there's nothing important more important to me outside of work and my family than fly fishing and it's part of American history I take not a single dollar to pursue my hobby of fly fishing why am I not entitled to the same subsidy an artist would be entitled to for creating art? Like, who decides that creating a mural or performing interpretive dance is more important than what I do to relax? Well, the National Endowment for the Arts. Well, does. that's kind of exactly it. Like, and, who made that decision? Well, the was federal, there a vote on it? The, the government did. The government uh, made that okay. decision, and and it was it's turned out to be a great decision. First of all for the economy because as I say it's a big generator of, of wealth and second of all it does things for instance um, you know the National Endowment for the Arts is in partnership with Walter Reed uh, VA Hospital yeah. where the Creative Coalition is going tomorrow and these small grants uh, um, multiply a lot of money and they help veterans who are suffering from PTSD. Right. So that is a really important I think that's element. great. I'm not against that but I bet if you took a poll of veterans and said would you rather see modern dance at Wall Street, or would you rather go to a NASCAR event? I bet they wouldn't even really be close. Now, there are towns and even cities in this country that are very far from NASCAR tracks. It takes hours to go see a NASCAR event. Why wouldn't that money be better spent constructing NASCAR venues, which is what more people would like to see than interpretive dance I'll venues? tell you why. Because there's been a, a, a survey of every Fortune 500 company in this country. Uh -huh. The one thing that they say that they want their employees to have more than anything else is creative thinking. Uh -huh. They want creative thinkers in these companies. Creativity is a muscle. The arts are the gym for that muscle. It's the bench press. It's the arm curl. And if you have cr a creative workforce, then these people have an imagination. So if you expose people to the arts, so an engineer, right, without creative training is just a technician. They're a cog in a machine. Well, I agree. An engineer with creative training, with an imagination, is going to invent the machine. So there, I mean, I, you know, that's a, that's a pretty clever argument, and nobody's against creativity. I'm emphatically for it, which is why I'm against arts funding, because it kills it. Anything that you subsidize through federal bureaucracies makes you less creative. But leaving that aside, is there a study you can point to that shows looking at NEA-funded art installations produces more creativity than going to a NASCAR event? Absolutely. Where, where is the it? Americans for the Arts have collected data on this for decades, 
And for instance, you know, if you and this, this they've tracked people this is, who've gone to NEA installations over time in a longitudinal study to show that they they're more creative. How okay, do they measure that? Let me give you an example. Right, I cut my teeth at a theater in Rhode Island, uh -huh. uh, where you went to school. I yes, believe. Yes, I did. Um, called Trinity Rep in Providence. Trinity Rep started out with a $5,000 NEA grant in a church. They put together a theater, and it's turned into one of the preeminent regional theaters in the country. One of the things that they did was they started a program called uh, um, Operation Discovery, or yes, Operation Discovery. They made it so that every public school kid in the state of Rhode Island was for free got on a bus and came to see shows what that did for that community for that city for that entire region was create an economy and a culture of creative people who were interested in hmm. the theater and it revitalized the well then downtown. a simple question why does Rhode Island have one of the highest unemployment rates in the country I, I don't know why it does right now but I'm, oh, I would think but, the arts would kind of save that fix that well I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now that the arts is not part of the problem Okay. The question is, look, again, I'm not against the arts. I like the arts, whatever that means. I mean, I guess anything can, you know, a crucifix submerged in a glass of urine famously was described as art by an NEA grantee. So, I mean, anything can be art. But I'm not against arts broadly. I don't think most people are. The problem is that, like, the infrastructure is crumbling, and the schools don't have enough teachers, and the debt is out of control, and Medicare and Social Security are underfunded. So at this moment when everybody's digging deep to make sure we can keep going, the government may shut down tomorrow. Why don't a few rich people get together, maybe actors, and say, you know what, we're not going to put this burden on the taxpayer, we're going to subsidize it ourselves. Why don't they do that? That's, like, get that's it. like saying, why doesn't Tom Cruise, you know, become the head of the, you know, the FDA? And like, you, no, you have like, your, why you have your Tom... meat stamped by Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise approves No, state. because who it, better it, it, to fund art than artists who've gotten rich from performing art? And that's, it, it, I just don't get that. Like, why don't actors again, kick again. in just a third of their income to this? Why not? Again, this, this has nothing to do with artists, per se. This has to do with the population of the United States. So non-artists need to fund artists because why? Every, why can't artists okay, help fund th this? This, is, this has become a well-known quote, but during World War II, Winston Churchill was approached by his finance minister who said, Mr. Churchill, we've got to cut our funding for the arts and put it toward the war effort. And Churchill's response was, then what are we fighting for? Because he understood that in a society, in a culture, the arts are what makes life worth living. Look, the art is the only pursuit that we have. Listen, it would be so tempting to make fun of that, but I'm not going to because, again, I like the art. I, I just, I like the arts. I sincerely do. I'm just saying they're priorities, and you have to like, create a hierarchy of what's most important. And right now, everyone's under the gun. Why can't you look at the camera and say, hey, Jeff Bezos? You're one of the richest, second richest person in America. Want to give us $10 billion if it's Look, that I'm, important. I'm I don't sure get that, it. I'm sure that Jeff Bezos and a lot of other, you know, multimillionaires and billionaires give a lot of money to the arts. I mean, you know, I'm not sure of that in, at all. The arts in New York are thriving and D.C. They, they give money to big organizations. But they could foot this but, bill in an afternoon without even thinking about it. Well, but, that, but that's not the point. The point is that when you have a government that represents the people that right. as described in the constitution of you know being responsible for the general welfare of the people you want to make sure that your population gets uh, exposure to things that will help them there, there are statistics from the, from the Americans for the Arts for instance I think that if most mothers knew that if their child had a complete um, curriculum in the arts, right. that their child would be three times more likely to graduate from high school. That is like a vaccination against all kinds of social ills. I don't think that will keep kids out of the, uh, the criminal justice system, the welfare system. If we if we get more, I'm kids not against that. I'm school. not against that. And we again, we could just fix this problem immediately if the people who benefited from the economy in the last 10 years, the least generous generation of rich people this country's ever seen would change their ways and start funding things for the common good. And they could start here, I think. And you should call, you, you've got their numbers, you should call them. I, I don't have their numbers, but I... <laughs> okay, but I, let's get together after the show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tim. It's great to see you. Thanks,